Welcome to Brands Hatch for rounds 11 and 12 of the Cox Motor Parts Civic Cup. Daniel Reason starts on pole position for the first of today's races, but it's championship duo of Rob Baker in second and Mark Grice in third that are really going to be the ones to watch. Before I hand you over to Richard John Neal and the commentary team, we were able to take a chance to speak with our two championship contenders before the race. Rob, championship leader coming into the last few rounds of, uh, of the Honda Cup. Um, championship position now, it's looking fairly, fairly safe. Yeah, it's, I, I haven't really worked it out properly because you can't work out people's drop scores and people's results for the next four races. But, uh, you know, as long as we keep finishing in the top five, top six, I think it should be OK. Mark, good to see you here at Brands Hatch, second in the championship, chasing Rob down. For only a few races left to go, what can you do? All I can do is keep pressing hard and hope he makes mistakes and just keep keep on him and just plod away. If I can salvage a few points from him over him this weekend, then it'll all go down to uh, Donington and see how it goes from there. Daniel Reason on the front row with Rob Baker for company, then Mark Grice and James Griffith, Jason Ballantyne and David Buki, row three, row four. Daniel Hobson and David Vincent from Bruce Winfield and Ben Sharp, then Lewis Rose and Matt Bolton. Scott Edgar on row seven from Chris Coomer, then it's Paul Taylor and Martin Diel, Andy Hart and Ollie Barsby on the ninth row. Row ten, Adam Kruger and Cameron Tunio, Luke Handley, Paul McHugh and Craig Carter completing our grid. This is round 11 of the championship under blue skies. A little bit of cloud cover, but nothing to worry about. Good start there by Jason Ballantyne. Makes a super start from fifth place. Ballantyne away well, the whole field away well. Relatively narrow here, and especially that is frightening. Look at Ballantyne weaving his way through the cars and up, I think, into third position. Ballantyne had a little bit of a wobble there as they go up Halewood's Hill into Druids for the first time. Cracking start from the Cox Motor Park Civic Cup. Looking to come around the outside there in white and green was David Vincent, but they're side by side for the lead here. Baker's got the line going down into Grand Hill Bend in the blue car, the championship leader. And he's going to, I think, get the lead as they go along Cooper Strait for the first time. Great view from Danny Hobson into the left-hander at Surtees, still side by side for the lead. And I said that Baker was going to get it, but Reason's got the inside line now. And that's a reason to be cheerful. Reason's got the lead. Now coming through to second place is Jason Ballantyne. Ballantyne into second. What a start. What a first lap from fifth position up into P2. The championship leader's on the outside line. He'll try and go around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend, but he's slotted into third place here. And that's sensible driving from Baker. The championship leader into third, but Ballantyne really on a mission. The man who lies third in the championship standings. Daniel Reason fourth in the championship. Baker runs a little bit wide there, and going up the inside line is James Griffith. They're all fighting it out. Hobson goes wide. That allows the 75 of David Vincent to come through. What a start to round 11 of the championship. You've only got four more races, including this one for the 2018 campaign. What a season we've had, so many different winners. And remember, we didn't get a, a second race winner this year until round, uh, round seven at Snetterton when Danny Hobson picked up his second win of the year. And Danny's fifth in the championship jointly with James Griffith. On board with David Buki. David starting off six on the grid. And I think maintaining sixth position at the moment, the blue and white car, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, yeah, I think he is at the minute goes through Paddock Hill Bend at the bottom that uh, tummy wrenching moment when you hit the bottom and then start to climb uphill there's David Buki in the 51 the EP3 one retirement so far this year which was round three on Anglesey the pace here absolutely electric this weekend a 54 second pole position lap for Daniel Reason, he was only one tenth quicker than Rob Baker the championship leader as Adam Kruger looks down the inside line of Matt Bolton's EP3, Matt back for the first time since Alton Park. He only did one race at Alton, but good to see him back in the mix as Danny Hobson continues to put pressure on David Vincent, buzzing the pit wall. So it's Danny Reason out front from Jason Ballantyne, then Rob Baker, a little bit of drift to those at the moment, then James Griffith in fourth position. And David Buki still giving chase as well as they head up under the Burton Power Bridge into the Druids' hairpin once again. 
Danny Hobson really getting close there. What a view you get from these onboards and indeed the outfields of these very, very colourful cars putting on a great show here. The Brands Indy circuit, very, very tight circuit. And these cars so evenly matched. What a great training ground for the British Touring Car Championship. Maybe prior to that, Clio Cup racing, maybe. But uh, a great championship in its own right. Never mind where it might lead. We've seen some super racing so far this year. Kicking off at Silverstone, of course, which is where we saw Daniel Reese taking pole position and the opening race win of the year. Looks like we might have a battle in the offing here. Danny Hobson chasing hard, looks to the outside line. Nothing quite doing there. May go for the cut back here out of Paddock Hill Bend. And before you can say too much, they're already up at the apex at Druids. There is Hobson in the 25, tied with James Griffith in fifth position on the championship, both on total points scored and on drop scores. You just cannot separate the pair of them from fifth position in the championship. But at the moment, Griffith's got the upper hand in this race, so he'll break that deadlock if things stay the way that they are at the moment. Um, probably guessing that they won't. There is Griffith in that standout red and fluorescent yellow car being put under pressure by Mark Grice, running second in the championship. Mark 29 points behind Jason Baker. That narrows on drop scores. Baker really gets behind. David Buki, I think, hit the kerb and he's spinning around and into the gravel, a cloud of gravel over the windscreen. And that is curtains for David Buki. Well, there was I pontificating on the championship positions and Buki disappears from six. He was ahead of David Vincent and Danny Hobson. And that's got to be a safety car there because that's in a real prone position. Any time a car goes off into the gravel at Brands Hatch, you're going, particularly at Paddock Hill Bend, you're going to put the safety car out because it's not a safe place for the driver to be. Let's just wait for the mid-order. You can see that the race leaders have got away. Safety car is going to be ideal for the midfielders who are coming through here. Chris Coomer heading Scott Edgar. Scott qualifying 13th, Chris 14th. So row seven starts for them. They're the guys that are going to be fighting it out to try and be on the front row for race two. You can see the wave yellow flags are out and it's a full course caution because the yellows there were coming on to the coming out of Clark Curve onto Brabham Strait. There's David Buki's car in the gravel. So although we haven't seen the safety car yet, the race leader um, has gone through. The safety car is out on circuit and we'll pick them up. The 55 car we're looking at is Chris Kuma. 195 Paul Taylor going through shots. And Luke Handley in 15, newcomer this weekend as indeed I was going to say, as it did, it's Matt Bolton, but Matt, of course, a returnee to uh, racing. But we have got newcomers, Scott Edgar and uh, Cameron Tunia. I remember Cameron, Cameron racing in the BARC Southeastern Centre races. Here's a replay of what happened. David Buki, you can see he was out on the kerb and that unsettled the car. There was no contact behind. And just a little bit wide, gets punished for that, into the gravel. There is that dust storm. Once the dust settles, we'll get the recovery in action. Here's the view from Daniel Hobson. You can see David's car just unsettled by the kerb on the outside line. He was trying to get a sweep and close in on the car in front. And it's going to be a non-finish. David Vincent and Mark Grice in front of him. Oh, he gets a little bit wide there. Is that going to cause a problem? Hobson is now on the outside line and trying to close down on Vincent, but Grice has survived that. Hobson has survived that. Goodness me, it could have all changed. And even a little error like that hasn't cost the driver. Maybe lost a little bit of momentum on James Griffith, who's running in fourth place, but they all survived. It's still Reason, Valentine, Baker, your top three, Griffiths, Griffith four, Ben, Mark Grice, David Vincent and Daniel Hobson. And they're really forming a train still after 15 minutes of racing, punctuated by the safety car. What a race we have had here as they go on to the last lap with Daniel Reese. Daniel Reese has improved the best lap time again. 54.713 for Reese. There he is. He's still pushing. Fastest lap for him on the penultimate lap of the race. Jason Ballantyne is second. Watch for Ballantyne coming through shot. 
he's still there. Rob Baker in third is going to tick that third position box for the first time this year. One win, five seconds and a third, assuming it stays the way that they are at the moment. Along the straight, through Surtees, left-hander, right-hander now at McLaren and into Clearways, the continual right-hander at Clearways now. And Daniel Reason in the FN2, what a job he's done. And it's going to be fascinating to see what he can do from 10th on the grid. 10th at the moment is Chris Coomer. He'll get pole for race two. But this one has been all about Daniel Reason. It is a reason to be cheerful. He takes the win here of round 11 of the championship. Jason Ballantyne second, then Rob Baker and James Griffith, Mark Grice fifth from David Vincent, Danny Hobson, Ben Sharp, Paul Taylor and Chris Coomer in 10th place. Scott Edgar was 11th from Matt Bolton and Luke Handy, Andy Hart next from Ollie Barsby, Cameron Tunio, Paul McHugh, Craig Carter and Lewis Rose completing the finishers. Fastest lap with Daniel Reeson, the winner. Daniel likes to flag victory, but it wasn't as easy as it sounds. No, we made a good start, made plenty of ground at the beginning. Um, and then the safety car came out, I thought, oh no, here we go, all to do again. Um, but we got a good restart and that was the most important thing. And then just controlled it after that. Jason, following on from Castle Coombe, this looked like it was going to be a good circuit for you. Qualifying, not quite as good, but you made up for it in the race. Yeah, not the strongest in qualifying, but got another brilliant start and made up a lot of ground in the first few corners. And yeah, it made it up in the race. It was really good. Rob, probably not the way that you wanted the race to finish, but critically for the championship, some good points. Everything seemed to happen on the opening lap, though. Yeah, all, all happened on the opening lap, and I'm happy with third. I mean, the dramas we had on Friday to come in, go P2 in qualifying and finish P3. I, I'm happy with that, really happy. The cars are getting ready to go out on track for the final race of this weekend in the Cox Motor Parts Civic Cup. The top 10 have a reverse grid, so that means Chris Kuma is on pole position. But as we saw in race one, anything can happen in the Civic Cup. The racing is that close. To take you through all of the action, it's over to Richard John Neal. Thank you, Lloyd. Chris Kuma on pole. Ben Sharp, who's second at Snetterton to his outside. Then Danny Hobson and David Vincent, Mark Grice and James Griffith on row three, row four. Rob Baker and Jason Ballantyne, followed by Daniel Reason and Scott Edgar. Matt Bolton and Paul Taylor are next from Luke Handley and Andy Hart. Ollie Barsby and Cameron Tunio, row eight, row nine, Paul McHugh and Craig Carter. They're followed by Lewis Rose and Adam Kruger. David Buki, Bruce Winfield and Martin DL with a fair amount to achieve in this race. There is Danny Hobson, who starts on row two. He's in line for some decent points maybe here from fourth on the grid, the lights go out, he makes a very good start, so too to Ben Sharp and Chris Kuma at the front, but David Buki's on an absolute mission from the back, looks down the inside line, bang, into the back of Luke Handley, not what Luke wanted at all, David Buki was very keen to try and come through, he's got Ollie Barsby right in front of him now in the number 10, so Buki looking to Buka place in the top 10, he would hope. Jason Ballantyne there, second in race number one, right in the mix as well. Right behind Cam Tunio at the moment, coming down Graham Hill Bend. Buki hard on the brakes. Martin DL immediately in front of us. Couple of cars going a little bit wide on that first lap. The clerks of the course will excuse that. But out front, it's Mark Grice who's come through in lead position. Mark Grice from the third row of the grid has read everything superbly on that opening lap. David Buki still making positions up. He's on the inside line of Martin Diel. He's going to try and come through. Is there room? Just about squeezing his way through. David Buki obviously looking to make progress. There's the onboard from Martin's car. David through. And on the inside line as well, Lewis Rose, who was second in round one of the year, and you might have seen slowing in race number one. There was so much going on. I didn't individually pick it out, but Lewis did drop back. And he's capable of moving, obviously, quite a way further up the field. Chris Cooper, though, second at the moment and chasing Mark Grice. Danny Hobson in the mix as well, having started in third place on the grid. And he's in fourth position at the moment, chasing Ben Sharp. Then, as we said, uh, round eight was his podium. And Danny Hobson teeing him up here. Thought he might have a look down the inside line, but Sharp's got it covered as they come onto the main straight here.
cloud cover less than we had in race number one but the sun lower down in the sky as you could see from the glint on the highly polished bonnets and the windscreens of these cars David Buki now looking at the 133 of Andy Hart Andy has uh, been knocking on the door of the top 10 hasn't quite achieved it yet Buki lunges down the inside line gives him a little tap on the way into Druids and Buki through little tap from Martin Diel as well he's definitely been in the wars the 133 car so Buki and Diel getting stuck in and now we've got Lewis Rose looking to try and go through as well Lewis who was uh, second in round one to Daniel Reason who won the first race remember the top 10 positions reversed here championship wise absolutely key of course to try and move up if you win race one it's a very tall order I would say particularly here at Brands Hatch to make decent enough progress and really you're probably looking at the drivers in in the middle of the top 10 to come through and win as, as we've said easy for me to say I suppose as we've seen Mark Rice come through from row three and take up the mantle of the uh, race lead which, which is there Kuma still in in that second place but some really good racing going on here as well in the field for fifth and sixth position so Ben Sharp at the moment ahead of David Vincent then we've got James Griffith in the mix as well all following pretty much the right line along Cooper Strait so it is about either going for a dive and what David Buki was doing there was what he felt he had to do make a dive on the inside line and I guess some of the other runners will know that they've got fast boys who didn't have a finish in race one starting behind them on board anyway with Danny Hobson third place at the moment Chris Kuma is the man in front Chris having a best result this year of seventh position round 10 race two at Castle Coombe and this is the great thing about the reverse grid racing it can build confidence for new drivers or rebuild confidence for drivers who have been up at the sharp end before look how crowded it is Ballantyne side by side with reason reason in black the race one winner having to go on the curves to try and find a way past Jason Ballantyne but can't quite do it the Griffith and Hobson battle by the way for fifth in the championship settled in favour of Griffith of course they're four wide along the Cooper straight but sort themselves out in time for Surtees it's James Griffith at the head of that one Jason Ballantyne has managed to break clear now of Daniel Reason Reason still putting in some good laps but it, it's physical stuff back on board with Martin Diel and we've got a problem here that is uh, Andy Hart's rear quarter so we said he was in the wars that's going to get the mechanical warning flag or the meatball flag call it what you will the black flag with the orange blob oh problems there for hearts before he could get the flag is off into the gravel now was that an irony i don't know if that was caused by the contact from david buki it might have been with another driver but that's where buki ended up in race one and poor old andy hart is going to have his first retirement of the year and that again has got to be a full course caution or safety car where that machine is so andy hart again this is such a quick lap it's it's not the easiest of circuits for the organizers to ping the safety car out straight away because it is a short lap less than a minute but uh, the yellow flags will be there you can see the marshals gesticulating to everyone the yellow flags out there from the marshals and we've got the full course caution in operation they'll slow down safety car board is out now you just see that I've got to say the onboard cameras really give you the idea and if you're focused on what's going on in front the last thing really you're looking for are flags you've got to be aware of them that's why they're waved so vigorously by the marshal so that you can actually see it why they're bright colors as well which is a common sense thing to say perhaps but drivers very often have something else on their mind about chasing the car in front rather than slowing down but the marshals have done the job the drivers have slowed down as well there is paul taylor in the 195 So, uh, safety car out. It's going to be a couple of laps again to retrieve Andy Hart's car. David Vincent. So, David Vincent's made it past. David Vincent now challenging Danny Hobson, or trying to close in and challenge on Danny Hobson. But uh, we've got James Griffith next up, then 
Jason Ballantyne, Daniel Reason in seventh place in black at the back of this group into the closing stages. I'm wondering whether we're going to see David Vincent move up another place here. Mark Grice is, an, is away and down the road. Here they come again across the line. So Grice, a clear leader at the minute. Hobson in a great shot of that very slight dip as they go on to the last lap. Daniel Reason now has got the fastest lap again on the penultimate lap of the race, exactly as he did in race number one. But it's Mark Grice who is going by the look of it to take the win, a third win of the year, the first driver to bag three wins this year, Grice, and the first to take them in back-to-back -back meetings by the look of it. Still got half a lap to go. So Grice in front, Hobson second, David Vincent in third. We're on board with Danny Hobson in second place. And Hobson, I think will reclaim fifth position maybe jointly on the standings after this race. They go past the stricken car of Martin DL. Only two retirees in this one. Testament to driving standards and car preparation. And that even more so for the man leading the race who's going to take the chequered flag. That is Mark Grice in the 34 car who goes down towards the chequered flag. Grice buzzes the pit wall and takes the checker. Wins round 12. Danny Hobson second. David Vincent third. Chris Coomer held on well for fourth position, then James Griffith and Jason Ballantyne, Danny Reason seventh from Rob Baker and Ben Sharp. Paul Taylor completes the top ten. Scott Edgar next. David Buki did pick up a penalty. He's classified twelfth from Matt Bolton and Lewis Rose. Then Ollie Barsby and Adam Kruger. Luke Handley, 17th from Cam Tunio. Paul McHugh and Craig Carter in 20th. Fastest lap of the race to Daniel Reason. Championship standings leaving Brands Hatch like this. Rob Baker, 19 points clear of Mark Grice. Jason Ballantyne, third from Daniel Reason. James Griffith in fifth position ahead of Danny Hobson. Then David Vincent in seventh. Mark, congratulations on your win. That really tightens the championship battle and uh, makes it all down to the wire in Donington. It certainly does, not even just for first place, you know, you've got Dan Reason and Jason Ballantyne just behind me chasing me and they closed points this morning, so to get that win meant a lot to me and to close the gap on Rob and to take it to the last round just shows how tight this championship really is. Very close racing all weekend, we've seen that particularly uh, with some of the safety cars and how people have responded on the, the restart, was that something that you were mindful of as well in this second race? Yes, I've never really uh, set off behind a safety car, especially not being first person set off. So as soon as it come out, I got in my mind what I was going to do and I just stuck with it so that I didn't change my mind. And to be fair, I did set off a little bit too early and I had to back off before it come in the pit lane. I thought I was going to overtake it at one stage. <laughs> so you've got to be very careful. Well, congratulations once again. And we look forward to seeing how the championship develops in the final rounds. Thank you very much. Cheers. Dan, well done on your second place. Not an easy race here at Brands Hatch in the end, but uh, you've come through with a bit of silverware to take home. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, such a close competitive series that there's nowhere to overtake. We're all bumper to bumper. You have a dive, you can cause an accident, and no, it was, it was great. I, just a shame the safety car came out in that one because me and Mark were having a really good battle there, and we sort of pulled away a bit, and no, it was great. David, congratulations on your third place. Tough racing out there, even more so with the safety car. Yeah, I did my usual and got an average start. People like Mark and uh, Danny, they all seem to get a better start. I normally lose three or four places and then maybe pick up one or two, but luckily I only managed to lose a couple of places and uh, get back up to third, so I'm really happy with that.